Okay. <clears throat> oh, we called to order the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of East Hampton. Today is Wednesday, April 28th. Uh, it, we are holding this meeting via Zoom as a result of the pandemic. Uh, first orders of business are going to be administrative items. We have correspondence and requests for comments from other boards, committees, or officials. Is there any? None. Anything on that? None. None. Okay. Do we have a public speak time? Uh, do you, uh, are there any, is there anyone present that is interested to speak that is not currently on the agenda for this evening? I would like to just, um, say real quick that the planning board is working on an accessory apartment amendments to the accessory apartment ordinance. Um, there's a public hearing. I don't remember the date, but Curtis can probably fill me in on. Uh, is it the joint public hearing? Yeah. Um, and I know the zoning board typically does the accessory apartment special permits. So if there was, um, comment or um, interest of the board or members of the board to attend that public hearing either um, as individuals or representatives of the board, um, then I just wanted to make everyone aware of that opportunity. What? Oops. So there's going, um, I think it's, I think the joint hearing between the uh, City of East Hampton's Ordinance Committee and the Planning Board is on Tuesday, uh, May 11th, but I want to, I will confirm that by email to the ZBA tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, uh, so the next item on the on there is minutes from our January or February twenty fourth and March twenty fourth, two thousand twenty one meetings. Make a motion to approve the minutes. All right. Second. Second. All in favor with a show of hands. Okay. Unanimous. All right. So at this point, it is 6.04, and we will uh, open the public hearings. We have a continued hearing from March 24th, Chris Rogers seeking a special permit under section 12.7 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance to operate a commercial establishment with uses retail and services number 10, restaurant and bar, and number 40, indoor recreation. The property is located at 105 Pleasant Street in the Neighborhood Business Zoning District. Okay, uh, Mr. Rogers or Mr. Squire, who is going to be speaking this evening? Uh, Mr. Squire will be sp uh, speaking. Sure. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Thanks. Um, yeah, so since the last hearing, um, you know, the what we had provided were, um, you know, revised uh, uh, traffic mitigation or, or um, you know, traffic reduction plan, as well as responding to several comments and questions. Um, I know the board had that had come through um, the planning office. So um, we had offered, uh, you know, provided answers or responses to those. Um, I'm happy to go through those. Um, I don't know whether everybody's seen those, but that, you know, I'm happy to go go through those, but essentially dealing with, um, you know, certain restrictions on the site typically, uh, basically, you know, limiting um, uh, uh, wait staff service on the outside deck and that, you know, none of that, um, you know, none of that outside deck area would be, would be, um, you know, uh, would include wait staff that would, that would um, deliver drinks or, or food otherwise. Um, there were some. Well, why don't I? I'll, why don't I share this? And other than me, so in response to some of the letters, uh, response to some of the questions, um, there were yeah questions about just you know limiting or restricting use and and um, 
the uh, you know entertainment or any of those other concerns in the back deck. And I you know general the answer was yes that it's only intended to be a place for you know folks to go out and like you said have a cigarette or sit and have a drink, but they would have to go to the window, um, the outside to to be served. Um, detailing staff incentives for vehicle trips. Um, he had outlined a plan to, um, you know, offer, uh, you know, incentives in the may way of payments and, and other, uh, other ways for um, employees taking advantage of, you know, some ride share options such as Uber or Lyft or, um, you know, other, other options. And then Patreon, um, you know, ride share program and incentives to offer, um, you know, uh, uh, assigning spaces in the parking lot specifically for car pools of, of uh, cars of three or more people and outlined a plan for, you know, uh, an hour pool and, you know, a gift certificate toward merchandise. Um, again, it just is a way with a small business to try and incentivize, um, you know, ride sharing and some of those, um, you know, opportunities that would limit um, the need for on-site parking. Um, there was a description about um, how tournaments would function and, and those numbers. Um, I'm happy to go through those, but you know, in general, um, there are roughly four league tournaments per year, um, which really isn't you know, very substantial. Um, and there's, um, you know, there's an outline of how, how the rotation of, of um, you know, the team play would work. And so, um, I can get into that in further detail if there's there's questions. Um, and then will the hall be available to rent for uh, other events besides tournament leagues? He said, yes, but it will be, be you know, primarily for, for billiards purposes. It won't be for, for the bar or for, you know, for the food or any other purpose. Um, and it'll be rent, rented, um, you know, on a limited basis and limited to, you know, 60 people at any time. Um, and it would be closed to the public. So. Um, that was responses to those, and I'm happy to go through. Um, sorry, happy to go through the you know the other uh, letter that we provided, um, just detailing some of the other um, elements of the site that would be considered um, as part of the um, you know traffic reduction plan. So um, I think those are the the major the major highlights of of what's been. Um, uh, been updated since the since the last hearing the site plan and and you know everything else remains largely the same so um, we're hopeful that uh, the board has had time to review and and consider those those options and those uh, proposals and we'll vote fav favorably okay so with that additional information, do, is there any member of the board that has any questions, concerns based on the responses? Lindsay, you're on mute. You're on mute, Lindsay. Sorry, thank you. Um, were you still planning on using the parking at the Millside parking lot? I, I actually parking. I did some. I did some looking on this one um, on behalf of the city side. And essentially, and uh, and I spoke with Jeff Jeff Squire about it briefly. There didn't seem to be a means by which the park could commit that those parking spaces would be reliably available to um, the patrons of the establishment at 105 Pleasant. Um, it's hypothetically still available, but my perspective from having spoken with uh, folks in the city is that it would be difficult to maintain those spaces as being uniquely available to 105 Pleasant and therefore potentially irresponsible to include as a commitment that the business is making long term. Okay, thank you. And, I, and I'm um, only offering that just because I had some internal dialogue that I wanted to share. Oh, no, I appreciate that information. Um, I have another question unless um, Jeff has anything to add about that. No, and I think I would just I would just say that that was one of the updates in that letter that we provided. Is that it, any reference to the to that parking you know availability we took out because we knew that there was potentially a concern. So, okay. Um, I had another question. Um, are you still planning on using a shuttle to provide you know access to offsite parking? 
Um, I believe um, that is definitely in our, you know, in our purview as far as availability. So. Okay. Um, what do you anticipate is the capacity on an average league night? You know, a week a week night, just like how many people do you think will be there? On an average week night, I'm figuring eight teams. Eight, te eight teams, and with up to eight people on a team, is that? Uh, generally, um, five for team generally show up. Um, sometimes there's six or seven, but um, they do um, rotate and come in and out. Like when they're done their game play, oftentimes they like mm -hmm. to leave. Okay, so eight teams, about five people. Yes. Okay. Um, I, did, Jeff, did you mention something about there being a window to pass drinks from the inside to the outside or was I mishearing something? No, so that was something that was presented for because there were questions about, you know, service on that rear deck. And so, you know, the what we had showed, I'm happy to um, share this. Um, so what, oops, so what, you know, this, this is the, obviously the, the pool area, the, the bar area, there's a window, an exterior window here where if people are outside and wanted to, you know, order a drink because there is no, the only doorway and, and egress and entrance onto the deck is through this doorway here. Um, but there will be no, you know, waitress or, or service out, out to the deck. So if anybody wanted to order something or pick up something, they would just go to the window to pick it up. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Those are all my questions. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, Steve. Um, have you ever thought of reaching out to either Lyft, Uber, or one of the local taxis that if your service staff and or customers were to utilize those service, you could have set up a plan with one of those establishments instead of doing the $10 per day DM, which to me sounds a little confusing. It might be a win-win situation for them and for you where if, you, if, if they know they're coming to and from your establishment, then they can maybe work out something. But have you thought of reaching out to them to see if he could work out? Uh, yes, I have. I just, um, I wanted to see if that was um, a feasible direction for us before um, I did that. In other words, um, that that was an approved concept. There, because right now it just seems you know a little confusing, you know, coming in and ten dollars uh, per day. I just thought it'd be a little bit easier to work yeah. out something like that. Well, I agree. Yeah. All right, that's all I have. I think that a lot of these ride service organizations are using, you know, AI to determine where they should be at a given point. And they'll learn very quickly if this is something that people are using, that they should be there. What's my thought on that? I have um, a comment. Go ahead, Linda. I have had concerns about the parking for this since the beginning. And that was when it was just a pool hall before we added restaurant, bar, and whatever else. And I think the applicant's letter, which says that on occasion he will rent it out and he can rent it out to up to 60 people. This site cannot handle that. I don't think this site can handle a bachelor party with 40 people playing pool. I'm gonna to have to vote to say no for parking. I mean, the simple fact that the applicant said 60 people what are there, 23 parking spaces? It just doesn't fit. I'm sorry, applicant. Okay. okay. Tony, do you have any questions? Uh, nope, I think uh, after all this time and as many meetings, um, 
every time we come up with stuff, they come back. And I think it's uh, pretty well set as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Jeff, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, much of what has, has already been said. So I don't think I have anything you know new to add. Um, you know, we're just looking to to establish a small you know a small business on a very constrained site and a you know a neighborhood business district. So um, you know, given the a lot of the surrounding uses, it seemed like an appropriate uh, location for for the business and and that it would be uh, you know an asset to the to the neighborhood and and that um, you know understanding the concerns for parking, but um, you know also being cognizant that that there is you know available on street parking that you know really isn't taken advantage of to any extent uh, at this point. So um, you know it, we obviously can't count that, um, but it's certainly something that. Um, you know, I think as a, as a prospective business owner takes into consideration when trying to figure out, you know, a, 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 an opportune site, given, um, you know, what's available at any given time. So, um, okay. Yeah. If you do rent out your facility, uh, and you have up to 60 people, are those 60 people in attendance going to be aware of your parking policy, like your yeah. patrons and your service staff? Absolutely. How? Um, by um, terms of the contract, uh, it'll be stated on there what our policy is as far as parking, and um, you know we expect them to abide by that. Okay. <clears throat> do you do you feel that? And I and I will. I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. Um, if there are signs posted on adjacent property owners that have signs that say, you know, owners will be towed at their own risk, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and do you think that's going to deter people from coming from to your establishment? I think, um, you know, like any pool estab establishment, billiard establishment, people adapt and conform to what's available. You know, um, there's places we go often, I play on several pool teams where um, we may carpool three or four people to go to a spot because it's limited parking or, um, you know, it's too far to walk to park in a spot that, you know, is not readily available closer. Okay. And along those lines, have you made any inroads, insights, inquiries uh, pertaining to receiving a uh, alcohol server's permit or whatever the, the rules or whatever the license might be? I actually have um, the old Peter Pan license. Okay. Okay, so you are already in possession of a serving license. That's correct. Okay. I've already gotten my uh, TIP certification for that and done everything that they've asked me to do as far as uh, preparing for that. Okay. Where did you get it from? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, it was uh, the old Peter Pan license. It was auctioned off. So at the end of the day, are you a bar or are you a pool hall? I'm a billiard hall with a bar in it for my billiard clients. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think if you, if you look at the plan, um, the majority of the building is taken up by pool tables and uh, restrooms. There isn't a lot of room in there for anything else. Correct. Okay. 
Yes, Curtis, you're on mute. The some of the conditions that planning staff drafted in preparation for this meeting are aimed at trying to clear up an answer to that question by allowing the ZBA to impose conditions that would essentially corral the use away from being anything other than a billiards hall. The banning of table service to tables set out on the deck, for example, would constrain the um, the the location from becoming a, a bar that happens to have you know table service out on the deck and would make it more of a billiards hall in function and as a primary retail model. Similarly, um, there's another proposed condition that's been posted that said, you know, this is non-transferable. Once this owner is no longer associated with the business, this ceases to be an operation just so that Chris couldn't then sell it to another owner who's less interested in running a billiards hall and says, oh, I've got a liquor license and an entertainment license. This is gonna be a bar with one billiard table set against the wall. Um, obviously, you know, the question is still salient, but the board can impose conditions to make sure that this institution operates as a billiards uh, hall as essentially as much as they want. Okay. The, excuse me. Since the, uh, uh, most of the space in this building is taken up by uh, pool tables and bathrooms, is there a possibility that the pool tables themselves can be covered up and used, say for banquets or buffets or something like that? Or why not use what you have for a larger group? Yeah, that wasn't an intended use. Um, I mean, if we're renting it out, it's for, um, for billiards. All right. Okay. Is there anyone else in waiting, Curtis? There are members of the public here, if that's the question. Or yes. are you talking about board members? Yeah, there's there's a, there's members of the public here. Is there anyone interested in speaking before we close the public hearing? Uh, Will Bundy here, I'd uh, be happy to give my comments. All right, go ahead, Will. And just so you know, your camera's off. Okay, you're all set, sorry. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, very much appreciate the resilience of this committee because um, we've been over this a lot. Uh, and um, I appreciate the clarifications about um, the fact that the board has a lot of leeway to guarantee that this is a billiards hall and not a bar. But I would I want to um, go back to the things that I've talked about before, which is that we still haven't talked about occupancy, and that's still an issue that this board hasn't addressed. And we haven't talked about what the role of the zoning board is, is to, to raise the minimum as to usage. And it seems that there's a very big reluctance on the board's part to even discuss this. I mean, there's a generic sense of saying you don't have enough parking, but there's no sense of what would be the appropriate parking given that just from this discussion, and I think actually the number is much bigger, there is a bar at which 50 people can get drinks just by the applicant's admission, right? So that deck can actually hold much more than 40 people. And um, I appreciate um, the planning department's designs to try and limit it and saying, well, there won't be table service. But that, that deck, if I can compliment the design, that deck is gonna be a really nice place to be, okay? Let's be really clear. Billiards is gonna bring certain aspects of traffic and so on, but that back deck, looking out over the Pasquanomic Trust property is gonna be a really nice place to be. 
and to sort of be kind of innocent and saying, oh, it's only going to be billiards players and it's only going to be people who can tolerate not getting table service is, is I don't know what level of satisfaction you're trying to find in terms of solutions here, but both as someone who's across the street and cares about this neighborhood a lot and is very, very guided by the fact that my parking has to stay within my footprint. Um, I don't get where you guys are at, in all honesty. It just, it, it, you're trying very hard to help a business that's trying to make a go of it, but you're letting go of the fact that it doesn't work. The math is not workable. There are reasonable efforts to try and reduce it, but it still doesn't work. You're going to have a really nice bar and there are going to be a bunch of people because they think East Hampton's a hip and fun place to be. And they go, oh, we're going to come over and go to this deck because they've got the right things on tap and it's a cool place and all this other stuff. I understand these elements. And I, I just think that there's kind of an abdication of dealing with a real tough, tough issue here. And, and the repercussion is on the neighborhood. And, and I'm sorry that that's the case because still you haven't discussed occupancy and you haven't discussed the notion that the board could actually say, no, actually you have to raise the minimum. And that's a very painful thing to do because that would mean the applicant wouldn't make it in. But you don't have a dialogue here about all those variables. And as I say all that, I recognize that this is a curveball of an application. It's, it's not something that comes before you a lot. So, so at the same time that I'm a, um, I'm a cranky neighbor, <laughs> I, I very much appreciate the difficulty of this. And, and, but I've been with this now. What are we been, or what are, where are we now in this? Is, uh, are we now six months in? I mean, I, what five? Sorry, I exaggerated. Probably feels like more to the applicant. But at any rate, um, I don't think we've dealt with oc occupancy. And I think we're really ignoring what's going on with that bar. It's going to be so cool and it's going to be a place that people are going to want to come to. And when you take that math and think about what it's really going to be, there's going to be an outcome and you can vote how you're going to vote. But I think my narrative, if that place is allowed to go in, is a narrative that's going to happen. And I just need to share my knowledge and my understanding and my concern for the neighborhood in that regard. So thank you, uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Curtis, is there anyone else on the public that's interested in speaking? Not that I see. Okay. So at this point, do we feel confident as a board to close the public hearing and have a discussion amongst ourselves? Yep. Okay. So at this point, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have an applicant in front of us who has done their due diligence and tried to meet the requirements that have been put, in for, put forth in front of them. What is, what is, what are people's thoughts? Do they meet the requirements to be able to have a neighborhood business in a neighborhood business, or is it a bar? I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is, does 
what they're proposing fit that particular lot. They chose a lot that had constraints on it, which means they were very limited with parking. And I think the fact that they said 60 people, Will Bundy keeps talking about occupancy. So let's say it has an occupancy of 60 people because the applicant in his letter said that. That parking lot cannot hold a 60 person occupancy. And I think all the parking mitigation measures that they proposed are basically pie in the sky. They're not realistic in the real world. So I'm gonna to have to vote no. Okay. Lindsay? I mostly agree with Linda. And as much as I think that this would be a nice addition to the area, I don't think there's enough parking, so. My vote would be no. Well, did somebody, uh, are we taking the vote or did somebody make a motion uh, to- uh, No, we're having a discussion, to Tony. Okay. So the question is, you know, what, what is the viability of accepting this application as it stands? And, you know, is it a reasonable application do we think that the they have met the requirements as yeah if if you want to call it under the amusement and recreation sector does it pass but the fact that they own a liquor license and they want to serve alcohol it becomes a twofold application and with that said we have we have the flexibility as a result to demand more or ask more of the applicant than what is the minimum requirement. And if you put two, if simple terms, it's a mixed use building. They have a pool hall and they have a bar room. They don't have a bar room. They have a, a bar, a teeny tiny bar. The bar in my house is bigger than that bar. Like I say, I just keep going back to the floor plan and look at it. And I'm like, you know, he's not going to have people sitting on top of a pool table, um, you know, to go drinking. You know, I don't know. It just seems I'm starting to feel like I, I work for the registry every time you come. It's something else, you ask for something else and come back again. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I, I don't know what else, what else you could ask of these, but what else you could ask of them. And I mean, and the thing about, uh, you know, the limit, 60 people or whatever, well, he can, he can propose any limit that he wants to say how many people are gonna be in there. Um, I go through this all the time with, uh, restroom requirements and I say okay we won't have more than 20 people and if there's more than 20 people well then that's an enforcement issue but um I, I just don't see where there's a where where there's a, where there's a problem there with the way the thing is designed and set up uh, well and and you know as well as I do the occupancy of the building is set by the square footage of the building yeah you know and that's what I I Go back to it all. Most of the square footage is taken up by pool tables. So, I mean, you can't put people in there unless they're sitting on top of the pool tables. So, it's a pool hall. That's what it is. <laughs> you know. Yeah. If it, if it was a bowling alley and half the space was bowling alleys, would that change it? Yeah. The square footage is the square footage, but the, the yeah. occupancy is based on the square footage. Yeah. What the square footage is used for. Steve? Well, you know, as Will said, there have been a, we've been on a five month uh, travel on this one here. In each session, there seems to be a lot of ifs. And listening to everybody, I realize that the pool tables take up a lot of the space within the building, but it is gonna be a new facility. And with COVID, people haven't been doing anything. And this is gonna be 
a big attraction and people are going to be coming and checking this out. I do believe that they are going to be on the deck and I could see people, many people on the deck. I could also see people mingling and standing in the parking lot. And they could be done playing pool or whatever they're doing and just mingling there. They may come in and join that group. So you'd have people in the building, on the deck, and in the parking lot. Okay. So as it stands right now, you know, have we heard enough for people to be able to make a decision? Yes, and I'll make a motion. I mean, we could keep debating this for another hour, and I don't know if we're going to change anyone's mind. I, I'm Linda. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm, I'm asking if people may have heard enough and feel they have enough information to be able to make a decision. I have heard enough. Okay. Are there any other questions the board has for the applicant, for uh, for Curtis or for Jamie? Jamie has her finger up there. She, she's. <laughs> I just. Um, I think that there there might be an opportunity to discuss conditions amongst the board, and I would push uh, push the board to discuss conditions so so as to see if there's any way to get everyone onto in, into an agreement, maybe by straw polling, which, which conditions would satisfy everyone. Um, if there's a way forward, I, I would encourage the board to find that, that middle ground um, to, con to, to find a set of conditions that could be approved along with this application. So I think that jumping right to a motion to approve or deny um, might be helped out by having a, a, a discussion about some of the conditions. I disagree. Okay. If it doesn't have enough parking spaces for the use, none of the conditions that are proposed will make a difference. We can debate another hour. And I'm sorry, I, I don't see what condition would make it so that when he rents it out to 60 people for a bachelor party, they're going to have enough parking. Well, I mean, I, I would think that the board can condition it so there's no, you know, special events or special events are limited to a certain number of times a year. So that way, if there is an inconvenience to the neighborhood, it wouldn't be every Friday night. It might be, you know, two months or uh, two, 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 three, five times a year. I, I don't, I'm just throwing out an idea. So I just think think hitting on, which is something that also that's occurred to me, is that if the board is concerned about exemplary circumstances in which the parking that's proposed for the site is insufficient, the board can very easily control those exemplary circumstances through conditions. If the board's concern is under normal operations, the parking is insufficient and no condition will resolve that, then, uh, then I agree no further discussion could possibly. That is my opinion. Okay, so now I have a question for administrative question. There are five members of the board. Is this is this a three to two, or do we need a simple majority, or do we need a? You'll need a four to one vote. To approve. To approve. Which is another comment that I would make. There is that if the board wanted to and they're under no obligation to do so the board could allow the applicant to withdraw without prejudice if it looked like we were going towards a reject vote because a deny vote would prevent the the applicant from reapplying for a similar permit on the correct and that's that that was kind of where i was going with that curtis is that you know in my in my simple math here straw vote it, if it's a four if four votes to win is required i'm not seeing that currently and that's why I was going to ask, you know, if 
on a simple straw vote right now, it doesn't look like it's gonna pass. Does the applicant want to look to withdraw without prejudice, reevaluate and see if there's a way they can come back uh, rather than you know, go for a two year stay before they can come back before the board? Yes. We would like to withdraw without prejudice. And I, I, I think, you know, uh, I'm just looking at, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing in front of me is uh, I know of at least two, maybe three people that are going to say no, maybe four. Uh, and and if, if that's the case, it may be in your best interest. And we would like to do so if we could. And we'll still need a motion to do that. Okay. So can I get a motion to approve a, uh, the applicant's request to withdraw without prejudice so on, moved. The, on the application? So moved. Okay, Linda, the second. second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. I hope we didn't waste everyone's time um, I just, I, I look at this as, as much as I would like to say yes, I don't know if it would pass, and it may be in your best interest to say, let's just stop and regroup and figure out what we can do. Okay. okay. Um, and that is, that is the best way to get out of here with your shirt. Okay. 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 All right. I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I have two comments before we adjourn the meeting. Oh, we're not we're not adjourning okay. yet. I have to go back right. to the uh, the agenda. So. I, I lost my link here. Um, is it okay if I speak? Or? You may speak, sir. Okay, well, I just want to thank the board uh, for their time and consideration, and uh, we're going to reevaluate, and we will be back. All right. Well, and and we we look forward to hearing from you again. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Are we all set? Or yeah. No, I will. We'll, yeah. That that part's done. You uh, you are finished. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Concerning? Anything right now, because we're looking to, uh, our next meeting is scheduled for May 26th at 6 p.m. Deadline for submission is May 19th, 2021 at noon. Do we have anyone who has applied as of right now? We have a lot of interest from various parties with whom I've spoken about various variances. Try saying that five times fast. Mm -hmm. um, but no one's actually furnished an application yet. We're coming up on the deadline of it anyway. I imagine we might have nothing on the agenda. I will not be at the May 26th meeting unless it's absolutely necessary. Now that I can do it remote, I'm going to have internet access where I am, but I prefer have a vacation. <laughs> Help me out. And also, Curtis. Yes. The letter that you sent out, the summarized questions from the board members. Yes. I found that totally inappropriate. Okay. I just have never seen a, mem a memo that was written by a staff person that included the applicant's comments that the applicant didn't write. I would prefer no, no, no. that. The applicant wrote those comments. But we don't know that because it doesn't, he didn't sign it. Oh, okay. I just, I just think that number 60, I just think the fact that this did not come from the applicant, it came from you, you could end up with all sorts of controversy with an applicant saying, I didn't write that. In mm. the future, I would prefer you write the questions and the applicant write the answers on two separate pieces of paper. Noted. 
it and, makes and, that, and and for the record i did not you know i'll state this for the record and it'll be recorded in the minutes you know i didn't write any of those answers i'm sure I, you didn't i'm sure you didn't but you can't tell that from this memo and anything. i just think that that could lead to serious problems in the future understood i appreciate the concern and i'll make sure that henceforth if i'm conferring any questions to the applicant the applicant responds on on their own letterhead they with their sign own. it and say these are my answers yeah understood all right thank you any other questions thoughts concerns just um point i don't know if everyone heard there will be a new member to the board um and curtis has more information i think they'll be introduced at the may meeting assuming that there is a may meeting um but that will make Linda's absence and other people's taking vacation time a little bit easier where not every board member will have to be at every meeting, but we will need to check in when, when those, when the applications come in, we'll do some sort of polling to just find out who's going to be present to make sure that we always have at least five members. Okay. So we, and the new member's name is uh, Matt Wog. Uh, I just spoke with him earlier today. I mentioned that we were going to have this meeting this evening. He he uh, has served on other boards in the city of East Hampton before. Um, I simply because this wasn't the only agenda item for this evening was an ongoing hearing that he would not be able to vote at because he wasn't present at the previous meetings. I encourage that he make his first one be the the meeting in May. Um, so he if we have a meeting in May, um, that will probably be his first meeting with the ZBA. Okay. All right. Um, is there any indication as to how much longer we're going to be remote on our meetings? I've had no direction so far that makes me think it's any one way or the other. I know that City Hall will be limitedly reopening to the public by appointment, but I think even within that context, the pub, it's hard to imagine holding public hearings in the meeting as it is right now. Okay. Just, I mean, just because hypothetically you could have, when you say public, you need to be prepared for the for public. public. Yeah, precisely. Okay. All right. Well, with that said, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. Have yourselves a great evening. Thank you. Take care all. Thank you.